afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. This day, 14th of April 2020. Of course, this is uh, somehow unusual, unusual live broadcast because I don't normally have my live broadcast by this time of the day. Welcome to joining me this afternoon. It's going to be a very brief. I know that my brief will almost be more than 30, 30 minutes because uh, I, I normally take my time to explain, explain whatever I have to explain to you. So welcome this afternoon. We'll be waiting for 500 viewers and we start. And like I said, this is very unusual time for my broadcast this afternoon. The awareness on Nigeria disintegration, the awareness for freedom of Biafra continues. And this afternoon, I have come to call on the Southern Nigeria uh, governors, governors from the Southern part of Nigeria. This live broadcast is for you. Those of you politicians from the Southern part of Nigeria, this live broadcast is for you. If you have a friend, who is a member of House of Assembly from the southern part of Nigeria. If you have a friend working in the government from the southern part of Nigeria, tag them, tag them, tag them. This is for them. This is for them. Everybody must listen to what I'm about to say this afternoon. Very, very important. Very, very important. So, like I said, like I said, the enemies, they are not sleeping. They are not sleeping. We are not sleeping. They are not resting. We are not resting as well. And we will always be miles ahead of the terrorist-controlled Nigeria government. Remember, if you are supporting this government today, know it that you are supporting terrorism. If you are supporting in any way Nigeria, you are supporting terrorist organization. If you are supporting Nigeria in any way, you are supporting and feeding the python that will swallow you. Now, I want to take you to a journey this afternoon. This is over 500 already. I want to take you to the journey this afternoon. Now, I want you to ask yourself a question. Why is it that the presidency, they want to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Buhari is giving statement in Asurok? Why would the presidency, Femi Adesina, and his criminal gangs in Asurok, would want to be proven beyond reasonable doubt to Nigerians that there is somebody called Buhari in Asorok. Why? Why can't they heed to our call by organizing fresh conference, fresh conference for this president, for this man they called Buhari to come and address Nigerians and take questions from journalists? Why is it so difficult for them to do that? Why must they be uh, uh, putting cameras, uh, uh, installing cameras in all corner of wherever they were giving and recording the video? Why must they be doing this? This is a question I am not asking them. Because there is nothing you ask them for them to give you answer. So, but I am asking you, Nigerians, I'm asking you, those of you who are believing that there is somebody called Buhari in Asorok. My question to you this afternoon is, why will the presidency try to prove beyond reasonable doubt like they are in criminal court, like they are some kind of a, a, a defendant in some criminal proceedings, that they have to prove to everybody by installing cameras everywhere to show that this person is Buhari. Now, first of all, 
Before I go ahead in the issue of Femi Adesina and the presidency Photoshop, I want you to pay attention to this. This is the Northern Nigeria. This is Northern Governors. You know, I have said it before, time without number, that it is time for the Southern Governors to come together and form what you call Southern Governors Forum. There is nothing like North East and North West. There is nothing like North Central or North whatever. What you have in the, in the North is the, what they call Northern Governors Forum. Look at what they have done. President is busy taking over Lagos. Like I said, they have planned to take over Lagos. Yoruba people think I was, think we are just joking. President is busy, is busy giving lockdown in Lagos and in Abuja. Is Lagos now the capital of Nigeria? President is busy from Abuja mandating Lagos to lock down. Mandating Lagos State to lock Yoruba land, their biggest target, one of their biggest targets, Fulani's target is Lagos. I have, told, I have told you people, I have told Yorubas that today you have a mayor of Lagos State. And I have told Yorubas that according to them, one quarter of the population in Lagos State are Fulani's, according to them. I have told you that they will soon start to have the institutionalization uh, 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 conquering Lagos by inst institutionalizing their, their men to go into local government election, to go into House of Assembly election, to go into councillors, to go into ward uh, uh, leadership and what have you. And now, nobody in Lagos State, nobody in Yoruba land is asking question. Why will the president single out Lagos? And mandate you forget about the the uh, forget about the population of Lagos. What is the population of Kano? What is the population of Kano? Ask yourself why didn't this lockdown extended to Kano? Why didn't the president extend this lockdown to Kano? Is the Kano population not almost the same with Lagos? According to them, I didn't say it. So. You should be asking yourself, why will the president stay in Abuja and order lockdown in Lagos? Meanwhile, the Northern governors are having their own decision concerning their region. Look at this. We can't lock down North, Northern governors. And Ambode, Ambode that tried to bring in you, to unite the southern governors in his own time, in 2017 or so, it was one of the major reasons they want Ambode out from Lagos State, by all means. Ambode did not commit any crime. Ambode was one of another good governor you have in Lagos State. But because of his vision, to unite the southern governors, which could actually give birth to all this, uh, the end of all this, your north, uh, uh, south, east, south, west, and whatever. They begin to fight against Abode, and they use Tinubu. They promised Tinubu presidency that this man called Abode has become a threat. He is trying to unite Southern governors. So, Tinubu, he, he is your boy. What you have to do now is to kick him out by all means if you want to save your presidency in 2023. And Tinubu, who is the power monger, who is ready to sell Yoruba people just to get power, swing into action and started fighting Ambode. Allegation upon allegation against Ambode only for trying to unite Southern governors. 
Go and check what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm telling you. In 2017, and they prepared for Ambode two years later, which is 2019, and they kicked him out from APC. They kicked him out because he want to unite the governors. Today, look at Northern Governor. This is what they don't want anybody from the Southern Nigeria to do. They have Northern Governors Forum, but there is no Southern Governors Forum. In this Northern Governors Forum, you have the Middle Belt. All Middle Belt states among them. They drag them into Northern Governors Forum. Are you telling me now that Plateau State is not? Are you telling me that Benue State is now not? Are you telling me that all the Middle Belt states now, they have all, all of a sudden, overnight, become Northern State? And no politician in Nigeria is raising eyebrow against this. No politician in Nigeria has ever asked question. Why do you have Middle Belt? Why do Middle Belt belong to Northern Governors Forum? Why? Are you saying that Middle Belt is now not Northern Nigeria? Why is this fraud happening in Nigeria and nobody is talking? Why is this fraud happening in a country of over 200 million people and nobody is talking? Why? Have you all been bewitched that nobody, no single person can talk against this fraud that the Fulanese are doing in Nigeria? How can you have Northern Governors Forum and you do not have Southern Governors Forum. How? Why is this possible? How can you stay alive in your country and allow this kind of impunity to be going on in your own country? Why? Look at, this is the reason why we are looking for Biafra. This is the reason why we want to, dis, to dissolve Nigeria because the impunity in Nigeria is just too much. Now, the Northern Governor Forum, upon all this pandemic, coronavirus pandemic, they met yesterday, on Monday. And this is their resolution. For in one Nigeria, in one Nigeria, where the, the imposter from Sudan is giving you mandates, mandating you in Yoruba, in Yoruba land, in Lagos State, which is their target, they want to take over Lagos is giving you that you must lock down Lagos. You must lock down Lagos. But he did not ask them to lock down Kaduna. He did not ask them to lock down Kano State. He did not ask them to lock down Medugri. He did not ask them to lock down uh, um, uh, Sokoto. He is locking down Lagos from Abuja. And the Northern governors have this to, to say to Nigerians who have so suddenly be bewitched with the highest, highest voodoo in Fulani land. Because this is beyond human uh, comprehension. This is beyond, this is beyond human comprehension. So this must be the highest voodoo that they are using on you Nigerians. Because I cannot understand how can you allow this to happen and nobody is asking question. The Northern State Governors Forum on Monday met to discuss the impact of coronavirus in the region. And whenever they met, they always discuss about the region. They don't discuss about Nigeria. They discuss about the region. But Omahi of Ebony State, whenever the Southern Governors Forum meet, they want to discuss the constitution of Nigeria. They want to discuss that the constitution of Nigeria is supreme. Omahe of Ebony State. Are you not seeing your counterpart in the, south, in the northern Nigeria? Chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum in, in Biafra land, Omahe of Ebony State. Are you not seeing your counterpart in the northern Nigeria? They don't talk about Nigeria constitution. They go straight to the point and discuss the region. They don't discuss Nigeria constitution. They don't discuss how to, re to, to, to respect 
the constitution of Nigeria, they are discussing how they, they are going to secure their region. Omahi of a Bonnie state and other South, Southern governors, are you not seeing your counterpart from the North? Read what they have decided to do in this pandemic. The meeting which was conducted via telephone conference and chaired by the forum chairman, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State, shared experiences on measures adopted by individual states to deal with this disease. A statement by Lalong Director, the Director of Press and Public Affairs, Dr. Macha Makut, on Monday stated that after receiving reports from various states, the governors resolved to strengthen a preventive measure against the pandemic through enhanced boundary control and surveillance, as well as greater collaboration to ensure that there was a synergy among them in restriction, in restriction of movement. Are the southern governors not seeing what the governors in the north, the people you call uh, uneducated people, the people you call uh, Fulanese, the people you call nomadic people, are you people not seeing what these people are doing in the northern Nigeria? Why have you allowed yourself to be bewitched by voodoo? Why? I thought all of you are going to church. Omahi of Ebony State, every day I see you praying in the church. Before the election, I see you lying down in, in the altar, praying and doing fasting. Are you not seeing what these northern governors are doing? Because it is now I'm convinced that all of you has been bewitched. You are being hypnotized by Fulani voodoo. Otherwise, why are you people not reasoning like what I am reasoning now? If you are not bewitched, if you are not under hypnosis of these Fulani people, why are you reasoning the way I am reasoning now? Why? Why must you be talking, talking Nigeria constitution? Nigeria constitution is supreme. Nigeria constitution is supreme. Whereas the people in the north who are governors like you never talked about Nigeria constitution. They talk about region. Read it. Let me start here again before going back. They say the northern governors, the Northern State Governors Forum on Monday met to discuss the impact of coronavirus in the region. They did not meet to discuss the impact of Constitution of Nigeria and how they can respect the Constitution of Nigeria, like you, Omahe of Ebony State. Now, the statement said, the Northern Governors agreed that at the moment, each state would adopt the measures suitable for its setting because total lockdown of the region, you see, every time they mention region, they are not mentioning Nigeria. Every time it is region, they say it is certain because total lockdown of the region will come at a very high cost since most of its citizens are farmers who need to go to farm since the rain have started. Everything these northern governors talk about is region. They are not talking about the, south, the, uh, the northeast. They are not talking about the northwest. They are not talking about the middle belt. It is not. Now, another issue discussed by the northern governors was the issue of palliative from the federal government, where they regretted that so far, no state in the region had received a dime as special allocation, despite the fact that some of them have recorded cases while others are making fantastic effort to prevent any outbreak as well as prepare against any eventuality are you hearing are you are you hearing what i am reading so what this statement tells you here is that only those only those states who have recorded cases of coronavirus are the one that are receiving the palliative or the palliative or whatever they call it the palliative me uh, measures and the palliative help from the federal government, which is the reason, which is the reason some people are being held against their will, without being even when the, the, the diagnosis and the result and the test come negative, they hold them. You must be positive. You must have corona 
because they are waiting for palliative package from the federal government. That is the only way the state will get palliative uh, package from the from the uh, federal government. Like in, in the Berwell state, you saw the lady I played her video yesterday begging that he has spent 16 days. The result came. It came negative. Not only that, they manipulated her date of birth and everything just to make sure they have somebody in their custody that is being under or that is being watched for corona for possible coronavirus. So that is what this statement is telling you. And these governors never said they want to follow constitution of Nigeria like the Mahi of a Bonnie State, who is being who who think he over Sabi, he knows it all. He knows it all. Meanwhile, all your people are being pushed to the bush. Your people are being killed with hunger, starvation, and inhuman treatment being meted on them. And all you do, whenever you come online, the governor of Ebony State is to come and say, you respect the constitution of Nigeria. Do you think that these northern governors don't know that the constitution of Nigeria exists? Most of them have been uh, in politics before you. Why must you not now look into the wealth of the region in which you are the chairman of the governor's forum? Why must you always talk Nigeria, Nigeria? Are you more Nigeria than these people who own oil well in, in Biafra land? Do you own oil well, Governor Mahe? Is there anybody in a Bonny state that own oil well in Nigeria today? Is there any single individual from a Bonny state to Mahe that own oil well? Why are you going to be more Nigeria than those who own oil well? I want anybody who knows Omahe or his aides or anybody that work with Omahe to send and tag them on this video. Because this is really pissing every one of us off. Why must Omahe be talking about Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria constitution? Whereas the Northern governors, anytime they meet, you can never hear anything like Nigeria constitution from them. They go straight to the point, they discuss issue of concerning the region. Like you can see what I'm reading now. Everything is about region. They are not talking about southeast. They are not talking about south-south. They are not talking about southwest. They are not talking about northeast. They are not talking about northwest. They are not talking about middle belt. They are talking about the northern region. And they are telling you, they are telling the federal government. And this is 19 states. They are telling the federal government that you are not, you don't have power over the northern state. Which is the reason why Buhari will give order to lock down Lagos and not Kano and not Sokoto and not Bauchi and not Medugri and not Zamfara but Lagos and none of you are asking questions none of you will be asking questions now let me read it again uh, continue this they observe has eaten deep into the pocket of the state as they have spent a lot of money already and may not be able to sustain this for, for a long time. Since preventive is better than cure, they can vast that the federal government grant them some special fund just as it has done to other states. Are you looking? Are you are you reading? These people are not interested in anything other than money. Money, money, money. Fund, fund, fund. It is all about money. Now they are protesting that they must, the federal government must grant them money like they granted to other states. Money, money, money. And this is the reason why they will, they will send tax force, tax force to go out and start arresting citizens who are not sick and compel them to stay in a solution center claiming they are under watch just to attract the federal government fund. Money, money, money. Read them. I did not say it. The Northern governors lamented that the region has no testing center, which is very disturbing. They resolved to, get to again liaise with the federal government to ensure that each state at least get one testing center while highly populated ones get two. Are you seeing that? These are not a governor's forum. The governors also discussed the economic impact 
of COVID-19 on the region. Every time is the region. Every time is the region. Who amongst you, the governor of the southern Nigeria, are discussing issue of economic impact in southern east, in southern state uh, of Nigeria? How many of you? And decided that they needed to take a holistic look at the economic uh, prospect of the region with a view to uh, repositioning, its, uh, repositioning it for less reliance on federal allocation and to prepare for the future by the, uh, diversifying to areas of comparative advantage such as agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, and the human capital development. They consequently set up a seven-man committee chaired by the governor of KB State, Atiku Bagudu, to fashion out a way forward. Are you hearing that? How many of you in the southern part of Nigeria is talking about southern region? How many? All of you think you are more Nigerian than this northern governors? You think you are, non, you think you are more Nigerian than this northern governors? Other members are the governor of Kaduna, Sokoto, Kwara, Nasarawa, Jigawa, Gombe, and Nasarawa State. How many of you are talking about the southern part of Nigeria as a region? How many? You are not thinking towards this direction. You are always because they continue. When these governors and this governor that have not had state, this not had state governors forum, they will fight you to the last drop of their blood. Any day, any of you wake up to say you want to have certain governors forum. That, that is what they did to Ambode. And they succeeded because and Ambode happens to belong to APC. If Ambode had belonged to PDP, or is, if it is the initiative of a PDP governor, that person will come back. But look at what they did to Ambode because he's an APC member and they could not even give him the, the ticket to contest for governorship in Lagos State. Again, for the second time. Because they want to unite the governors in the southern part of Nigeria. Now, how many governors in the south are talking about the region? Nobody. Nobody. is a shame. It's a shame to all of you that anytime you come publicly, you will be talking about Nigeria constitution, Nigeria constitution. Are you the only one that is a governor in Nigeria? Now, that is by the way. Remember I told you yesterday that the, the chief of army staff have relocated to the northeast to regroup Boko Haram members and fund them and, and arm them. You see what is happening? Immediately, the chief of army staff, army staff or whatever he's called, relocated to, to, to northeast. This is the kind of news you will be hearing. Children killed as Air Force accidentally bombed Bruno Village. Are you seeing that? It has now become an accidentally bombing of civilians, bombing of children under the supervision of Burutai. Because Boko Haram can no longer, can no longer carry out the job of cleansing the people who they regard as infidel in the Northeast. Boko Haram don't no longer do that because Chad have reduced them to zero. So Brutai now have sent his boys. It is time to begin to do accidental discharge on Nigerians. Accidental discharge from the air on civilians. Accidental discharge from the air on women and children in northern Nigeria. Nobody is asking question. How can army immediately brutally relocated to the northeast? How can army now come to begin to bomb, to bombard villages and kill children? Is the village in Sambisa Forest? Does the village look like a forest to Nigeria Air Force? Does this village look like a place where Boko Haram tanks are, are being kept to Nigeria Air Force? Why bombing and killing children when the man who feels that he is the commander, it is time to call for resignation and the sack of Burutai. We want this because of this single action that he commanded the Nigeria Air Force to start killing Nigerians. 
especially in the villages they believe that they don't uh, uh, subscribe to Islamic State, ordering their killing, their bombardment, we are calling on international community, we are calling on the United corrupt United Nation, because that's what they are. We are calling on every international community leader, every leader around the world, to look at Brutai, what he has done. Just few days, he relocated to the northern Nigeria. He has ordered the bombardment of villages and killing of children, innocent children and women. Those they feel, especially those areas they feel that they don't believe in Boko Haram agendas. They don't believe in Islamic State. They are ordering their bombardment. And now they are saying, accidentally bombing and killing children. How can you be killing children and women accidentally? How can you be bombing? How can you be bombing villages in Nigeria accidentally? Military men say you accidentally bombing children and bombing the women. This is a very big insult on Nigeria intelligence. This is a very big insult to the intelligence of Nigerians. And nobody have come to say hashtag resign and face ICC brutal. Nobody in Nigeria, if it is BBC or BBN, is it BB Niger? What is it called? You people are voting in millions. If it is BB Niger, is it BB Niger or what is it called? You people are voting in millions. But look at what the Nigerian military under the control of Boko Haram are doing to human beings like you who live in the same country like you. Because you are not in the north. Nobody has come to social media. No celebrity, no activist, nobody, no journalist have come on social media to start a hashtag campaign, resign and face ICC, chief of army staff, for killing innocent women, innocent children, innocent people in Nigeria, and you call it accidental bomb. Oh my God. Nigerians, who have done this to you? Who have done this to all of you? Oh, Nigerians. What has come upon Nigerians? That women and children are being killed from the air. Not even, not, that is when the bomb lands there. It scatters these children. It tears them. You don't even see their dead body. You don't even see their head. Everything vanish. And the military will come to say it is accidental bombing. Oh, and you have activists everywhere. You have journalists everywhere. You have celebrities everywhere. And nobody care, nobody care, nobody care. Everybody is struggling to feed his family. Everybody is struggling to build mansion. Everybody is struggling to be good. Everybody is struggling to buy a cars. You are struggling. You want to be the best in your area. You want to be the best in your area. Meanwhile, the people, human beings like you in Nigeria are being killed on a daily basis. It is no longer, it is no longer accidental discharge with AK-47. It is no longer accidental discharge on the road. It is no longer accidental discharge in road in checkpoints. It is now from the air, from the air. Vulnerable women, vulnerable children are being killed on daily basis and Nigerians are not talking. None of you are talking in Nigeria. And these children that are killed now, nobody will speak for them. Nobody will speak for these children. Nobody is talking in Nigeria. What has befallen you, Nigerians? What has befallen you? 
what has befallen all of you? What has befallen you, Nigerians? What has Fulanese done to you, Nigerians? What has Fulanese, what has terrorist group in Nigeria done to you, Nigerians? That nobody can reason again that women and children are being killed accidentally from the air and nobody is doing anything. No campaign, no shut down Nigeria, no occupy Nigeria. Nobody is going to Asoro to protest and this is only what they will come to do accidentally bombing children, accidentally bombing pregnant women, accidentally bombing human beings, and the president is still coming to speak in public, and the entire world is watching Nigerians being killed by their own military that should protect them. This is heartbreaking. This is heartbreaking. Like I've said, if war, if war happened in Biafra today in Nigeria, I will be the first person to take the next available flight to Nigeria. And I will fight until the last. I am not the kind of person that will be here and telling you to do this and do that. If the war breaks today, that we are going to fight for the freedom of Biafra, I will take the next available flight and I will fight and I will fight for freedom of Biafra. That all of you will sit in Nigeria and you call yourself activist and people are being bombed like this accidentally in Nigeria, in your own country. And no activist is making any hashtag anywhere for anybody to resign. And all of you are interested in money, 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 money. What you want to get from the government what you want to get from the government, you die, every money will still be there. You have, before you were born, money was there, and you will die, and money will continue to be exist in existence. Why can't you just fight for humanity? Why all these pastors in Nigeria, all these people flying private jets, every Sunday, you can't allow us to hear what? Look at how people are being bombarded in Nigeria. Innocent women, innocent children, and none of you are talking. None of you GOs. None of you over uh, general overseers. None of you will see this news that Nigerian military have come to tell you that they accidentally bomb villages because nobody, probably that village don't even have anybody in the National Assembly. That village do not have anybody representing them. That village do not have anybody in the House of Representatives. That village probably do not have any billionaire. That probably don't have Dankote. That village do not have Umayi of a Bonny State. That is not where he come from. That village do not have Buhari. That is not where he come from. It is not where the senior president of Nigeria come from. It is not where Brutai come from. And nobody will ask questions, nobody will defend them because they happen to be in Nigeria in evil country. And all you can do is to come and write it, not even in a, in a, in a good uh, newspaper, it is in the cabo, that the, the children has been killed, women has been killed, uh, accidentally bombing from the air. And nobody, president of Nigeria, is yet to give statements on this. The presidency has is yet to do anything on this on this news, and and he just reported it, and that is just the way it goes. 
And this kind of thing happen every day. And this is what you will look at. You will sometimes you don't bring, you don't blame the terrorist. Sometimes when people talk when, when you bring out the beast in people, you don't blame some of the terrorists. Because the actions of this government, the actions of the people ruling them has bring out the beast in them. Sometimes you don't blame criminals. Is sometimes you don't blame bandits because the action of the people in government has brought out the beast in them. I just pray that one day this whole thing will lead to war. It will lead to civil war and everybody will take the will take part. And that day is fast coming. And when they come to tell you 17 people has been killed, you know that over the whole village has been wiped out. You can imagine when a bomb is falling in villages where women and children are helpless. You can imagine the level, how many numbers of people that will be killed. They said at least 17 people were said to have been killed when a fighter jet belonging to the Nigeria Air Force fired a bomb on, Sokat on, on, on so, uh, Sakotoku village in Dambo, a local government area of Bruno State. Residents told the Cabo that those killed include women and children who were said to be playing under mango trees. Can you imagine that? Children playing under mango tree and they just met their untimely death just like that? And their body will be scattered everywhere. Meanwhile, Boko Haram are living freely in Sambisa Forest. The Air Force military sources said it was informed that Boko Haram insurgents were gathering around the village on Thursday afternoon. Can you imagine that? They informed them that Boko Haram were gathering. He informed them Boko Haram were gathering. Don't you know where Boko Haram then is in Sabisa Forest? They inform you, Boko Haram we are gathering. And there is no intelligence. You all are buffoon. All the military men in Nigeria are all terrorists. You are all buffoon. You don't know anything you deserve to. All of you deserve to die. All of you deserve to die. All of you deserve to die. The supposed target, according to a source, was an area in, Korong in Koronglium, a neighboring village 12 kilometers away where suspected Boko Haram insurgents had gathered. So how does that now connect to another village? You suspected Boko Haram is gathering another village. You are bombing another village. What is the, what does, does it make any sense? In, in, in 12 kilometers away, you are already bombing another village and killing children and women. Vulnerable people, defenseless children, you are bombing them. Because your plan, because Boko Haram would have done that if he didn't do it. If he did not bomb them, Boko Haram would have come anyway and killed them. So you helped Boko Haram to clear the village. If the civil war is going to happen in Nigeria again, I'm telling you, it is not going to be what you see in the 60s. In 1960, it was 30,000 soldiers. In 1960, it was 30,000 soldiers against 5,000 Biafrans. And if it happened in this 21st century, it is going to be what we will run, we will run you over in one month. In one month, we will run you over 
to the last place in the north. In, two, in 1967, we had only 5,000, only 5,000 soldiers against you, Nigeria. And you had 30,000 soldiers plus your, foreign, from your, plus your foreign mercenaries and the support from Russia and the United Kingdom. This time around, after this exposition we are doing, you know that nobody, entire world, everybody is running away from you. If we, if we have another civil war in Nigeria, it is not going to be what you see in the 60s. It is going to be on a different level. Again, when they tell you, when they tell you to stay at home, they lock down the, uh, the, the southern part of Nigeria. This is how they treat people in the north. In Katina State, for example, this is a press re release. They have given this uh, uh, directive, uh, one, the suspension of Friday prayers has been lifted with immediate effect, but to be conducted under some stipulated health security guidelines. This is in Katina State, in Buhari's state. The Jumat Imam should, however, avoid prolonged sermon in order to discharge their followers within short period. In the southern part of Nigeria, they are coming to your churches to arrest you and disturb you. And of course, why wouldn't they do that? What has the church done in Nigeria? What has the church done other than scamming Nigerians? The church in Nigeria today, what have you done? Look at how they are treating the, the Muslim, your Muslim counterpart in the north. Look, this is the way the, the first hand or first class citizens... They are giving them the opportunity to gather in the north, but not you in the south, because they know you are scam. They know God is no longer with you. God is no longer with you, the Christians. That is the fact. Because if God is with you, all these things, how can you have thousands and thousands of churches in Nigeria? Every street you go in Nigeria, you will see 10 churches. God is no longer with you. We have heard how all of you are committing one crime or the other, and you call yourself pastors. Those of you, are, this today is going to be different. I am not looking at anybody, and I am not looking at anybody, whether you are a man of God or you are not a man of God. God has left all of you. You are only committing scam and fraud on Nigerians. God left you. You cannot have the God I am serving, the living God. And what is going on in your vicinity will continue to go on. You cannot have the living God that we all know from the Bible and from the story of Jesus and from the story of God. You cannot be serving the same God and claim that that God is still with you and what is going on now is happening in Nigeria. I don't believe that. You don't have God. God, the spirit of God has left Nigeria and what you are having now is the punishment. You are actually living in the wrath of God. The wrath of God has befallen on Nigeria, including on the Christians. So those who are being saved now are on individual mercy of God. It is not church. It is individual mercy of God. Those of you who worship your God in spirit and in cleanness, in clean hand, are the ones that the spirit of God are with. Spirit of God has left church. You see, if you, if you believe in God and you are praying and worshiping God from by yourself, that is when the spirit of God will work in you. If you are believing that your spirit of God is in your pastor, you are deceiving yourself because the Spirit of God has left all the pastors in Nigeria. They are all criminals and scammers. Spirit of God left them. Spirit of God are with you now, individuals, who do not know the sin and the level of sins your pastor are committing. And out of ignorance, you are still going to church to worship in his church, to worship in her church, because you do not know the level of crime and sin he has committed or he is committing in secret. And you ignorantly go and worship in his church. It is you that the Spirit of God is actually with. Not with your pastors anymore. The Spirit of God has left. All the things you see that people are parading themselves as men of God today, very soon everything will cease. I put, I come to, to uh, this broadcast is going to end here. Join me again in the evening as I continue uh, my live broadcast. I'm going to bring to you 
the, uh, the awareness for Biafra, freedom continues. In Biafra, everything is going to be different. Everything is going to be different in Biafra land. In Biafra land, like I said, Biafra is going to be the beginning of civilization in Africa. It breaks my heart to see that innocent children are being killed. It breaks my heart to see that innocent children and women are being killed from the air. Not accidental AK-47 discharge again. Not accidental discharge anymore. Now Brutai relocated to the northern Nigeria and you are having accidental discharge from the air. They are bombing. Bombing women and bombing children. And nobody has done anything. Nobody is hashtagging that every military chief resign. Nobody is hashtagging Brutai to face ICC. International Criminal Court. Nobody has started that movement. Nobody has started that, that crusade in social media. All of you are looking for how to embezzle money and loot whenever the opportunity calls. But on Judgment Day, everybody has what to tell God. Thank you for being with me and see you in the evening.